Hello and welcome. Earlier today, I sent a transfer or a withdrawal from Coinbase. And before I could push, push this confirm button, they asked me a question if I was sending this to another Bitcoin service or exchange. With the question, why am I seeing this? And they're basically stating that they don't support these services. Now today is the day that I decided or I, de I have decided to physically put cryptocurrencies into cold storage. Now I decided this 12 days ago. It just took 12 days for my Trezor hard wallet to get shipped. But I find this very interesting. Sort of like if you're at a bank or whatever using your Interact card, your debit card or a credit card and then the company asks, uh, are you sending this to yada yada or to whomever else? I mean, is it really any of your business is what I think? Question mark. And currently I have uh, deposited or transferred a little over two ninths of my bankroll into the hard treasure wallet. Uh, I don't have much of coins outside of Bitcoin and Litecoin. It's not really worth me putting my Dash or my Ethereum or my ZEC or my Bitcoin Cash on there because they're pretty much like a bunch of like a leather trades. I got an okay amount of Ether, I guess, but I wouldn't be able to put too much on there. Still some codes that I got to accumulate. I've accumulated a decent amount of Litecoin. I didn't buy much today, but I, I ended up buying that just because I've got a number that I want to get to and now I'm close to half of the amount of Litecoin that I want to get. So most of them are in here, the Trezor wallet. Some of them, the rest of them, have sell orders on them. I'm looking, of course, to buy back cheaper. If the market shoots up really high, well, I'll just transfer Litecoins over to sell on the exchange when I know it's time to sell. So it's a very easy task to even have codes that I'm looking to trade to move over to the wallet, to the hard wallet. The advantage of using a hot wallet over the cold wallet is you will, well, you'll encounter less fees because just sending it back and forth to safety is going to cost a little bit when you pay transaction fees. And that's the next segment I'm going to get into is the Bitcoin fees. And then, of course, when you're playing a hot wallet, that means you can increase Bitcoin doing it. So I didn't even, I, I've always wanted to have my, uh, a portion of my Bitcoins protected. And they, the number will go higher than that. But I need to have enough available to uh, make more. And as they say in poker, like poker chips are like ammunition because they make you more. It's the exact same thing here with the amount of bitcoins that you have to be able to use to make more and you got to do it on the hot wallets. Now my ratio of bitcoin to alts I see this quite often when I look at numbers within cryptos. I'll look at one of my my my, my top altcoin might say oh it's worth 0 0.6184 oh 61.8 percent I have seen that number in so many different levels when I'm just looking at numbers amongst trading probably 10 times more than random numbers should suggest I kind of find it a little interesting not really freaky but interesting now whether that number is a little high I do realize that I want to get into alternate coins and I'm probably going to want to be closer to 30 to 35 percent Bitcoin and then 65 to 70 percent alternate coin and this number just a few days ago was closer to 64 65 anyway let's continue on further with the prices of well just uh, Bitcoin itself and its uh, actual practical use now, 30,000 Satoshi in Bitcoin is worth over two American dollars. And a lot of times transfer fees can be much higher than that as well. Making it very expensive to transfer Bitcoin. In my line of work, 
as far as using exchanges to make money. I have no way around such in having to pay these fees a few times over. But it's part of an expense to make greater sum. It's also not the quickest of transfers. I've seen it worse months back and when I started it was better and it was worse compared to years back from what I've heard. And I used Bitcoin earlier as money and it took about six to seven minutes for the transaction to enter the block. And it's interesting because if you buy from some places on Bitcoin they'll give you a timer. Oh pay to this address and this amount. You got 15 minutes to pay us. Here's the countdown. Okay well you're watching the countdown go and go and you're not even seeing enter the block. Finally it did and then the, the confirmation came in. But when I was sending Litecoin and Bitcoin over to the hard wallet, I would literally send Litecoin, say from Bittrex and from uh, uh, Coinbase, and it was instant. I would literally push the send button, then I would go to my Trezor wallet, maybe three seconds later, and I see, oh, two Litecoin, which is the first deposit that I made. Okay, wow, cool. And then Bitcoin, much, much longer. Bitcoin is over 7,000 US dollars. Litecoin is much, much lower than 100, probably around 60 or I think. But as time moves on and Bitcoin prices accelerating, that's only going to make these fees substantially much greater. For it just doesn't make sense where you should be thinking, yeah, I want to hold something that's costing 80 times more and then this other coin, which is more, more efficient, more reliable, and just better in so many levels that it'll be interesting within the Bitcoin and the alternate coins moving forward, which one will reign supreme? Because we talk about everybody being into it when the taxi driver says it's time to get Bitcoin then we are really leaving that early adoption phase. But I'm not really looking for when the cab driver is asking if you're getting into it, but if that's how you want to pay. And when I say that, will it be Bitcoin? Will it be Ethereum? Will it be Litecoin? Will it be some other coin? Because in a day and time when Bitcoin becomes more and more used as money, it'll be interesting which one will run supreme going forward. And I'm going to finish this off within the total market cap, excluding Bitcoin. If we look at this chart, resistance at 76, again at 76, makes it up to 79, closer to 80, above 80 here. Then it's resisting 76 again, resisting 76, 77. Now it's breaking out up to 82 above this resistance, previous resistance in at uh, 97. That's, that's a pretty big deal, actually. And will this now be time for a reversal of trend? That'll be interesting. Now, if anyone knows how I can get this data that would be fantastic. Uh, hourly, daily, quarterly. Because what would be awesome with this is, okay, I like the market capitalization priced in dollars. But how about the market capitalization excluding Bitcoin priced in Bitcoin? Well, that's easy to do if I have this data. When I click on this, I... I, I None of this will get me the data that I want. I've tried searching different areas and haven't been able to come with uh, much luck. But if you're looking for something like a dollar index, 
kind of deal, which compares how a dollar is against the rest, or even something like a stock market index. How is the stock market against the dollar, your main trading currency? Well, how are the alternate coins against the Bitcoin, the main trading currency? But for now, it's uh, it's time I think I'm, I'm going to have to decide in a serious level uh, how many more alts to buy. All I did today was added a little bit of, of LTC. In fact, I've sold a bit today because uh, some sell orders came in, only a few. All right, all right then. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.